Hey guys, it's Kane here. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to introduce you the final contract that we're going to use in the Flogoritm program. This contract is called the loop sequence. We also call it iteration. So what is iteration? What are loops exactly? Uh, the loop structure is a programming construct that is used to repeat a series of statements until a certain condition is met. It is used either for a number of times or a certain control statement is satisfied so that it will stop the entire loop structure. There are also loops that never stop and we call them infinite loops. Loops are displayed with the following symbol in the flowchart. The symbol that we use in here is from the IBM template and as you can see from uh, the symbol itself, just like a control structure, it goes to either a true or a false branch. This means that in a loop structure, you can use uh, one of the logical statements that we mentioned before in the control statement part. So how does a loop work? Basically, what you do in here is that you declare a certain value and you basically define the end outcome for that value and until that outcome is met a certain operation takes place and it becomes true so this means that as long as the loop structure is true it continuously executes it hence creating a circle and it gets the name of loop when it matches with the certain condition which means in this case the count being more than 100 then it comes to a condition that it is no longer less than or equals to 100 so whenever this count becomes 101 it goes to the false statement and in here as you can see it stops the entire loop structure this specific programming construct allows you to execute a series of statements repeatedly. So instead of writing those statements one by one, you actually do it once inside a loop uh, structure and it keeps repeating itself. Like look at this example. We set zero to count, which means the initial value of count is zero. And while the count is less than or equals to a hundred, as long as the count is less than or equals to a hundred, it displays the count, set the count plus one to count, which means one by one, the value of count will increase each time the loop executes. We put an end while at the end, indicating the loop structure has ended. You can also use other keywords because there are three types of loops in any programming environment. This is while, for, and do. In modern languages, there's a fourth loop structure called for each loop. However, we are not going to cover for each loop in this course because it's more related to object data. Currently, we are not learning object-oriented programming, so we're going to omit the fourth loop structure and gonna going to focus on these three which are while for and do whenever we execute a loop structure in flowcharts we usually stick to the while loop because technically there is no difference in between those yet however when we go to the programming environment and actually type the loops we'll see the difference between while for and the while so let's solve an exercise together. Perhaps this way we can understand uh, the, the use of loops much better than uh, the example. So I'm going to go into the flow algorithm and create a new uh, application, a new file. And in this exercise, I'm going to show you all numbers in between 1 and 100 that are even numbers. First of all, I'm going to show you all numbers and then I'm going to show you only the even ones. So just to write the exercise, I'm going to put an exercise here. 
the exercise is list all numbers, all whole numbers in between 1 and 100. And the exercise 2 will be list all all even numbers in between 0 and 100. So there are two exercises that we're going to solve using this loop structure. So let's start with the first one. The first thing that we're going to do in here is to declare a count. You can call your count anything, but it's because you're going to do basically a counter, it is a nice idea to give your variables meaningful names. So I'm going to declare a value called counter. And because the starting point of the first exercise is 1, I'm going to put the assign operator here and assign the count value to 1. What I'm going to do in here is to reach to an upper end. In this case, that upper end is 100, which means that when the counter hits to 100, it will actually stop. So this is how you should structure the loop structure. The upper end is where you need to stop. So you must make sure that the loop at some point comes to a point in the program that it will stop. For us in the first question, this point is when it hits to 100. So we can count the numbers, all numbers that are less than equals to 100. So whenever it's going to be 101, it will stop. So that will be our condition. Now when we do this, as long as this is true, we're going to list the numbers. This means that you can show the counter itself. If you want to show the counter, you can simply type counter here. And each time, if you don't increase the counter, this will go to infinity. So it will continuously show 1. And that will be the end of it. Okay? So make sure that this is also counter, not count. So counter, counter, define the counter. Whenever I run it, it continuously shows 1 and it actually never stops. What we need to do here, even when I want to uh, stop it, it pops up as you can see. So what we created an infinite loop, but I don't want to do that because usually infinite loops are regarded as bad practice in traditional programming. What we need to do here is that we need to stop the loop. So we're going to assign an operator and we're going to say counter is actually going to increase each time one by one. So once you have done this, you can increase the counter one by one. And whenever I run the program now, as you can see, it will start counting from one. It goes two, three, four, five, six, goes down until it hits to the hundred upper limit. When it's 100, it no longer listed. So that is the way of using the loops. There's a start point, there's an upper limit execution. You say that as long as it is less than or equals to 100, execute this, and when it is false, it ends. What about the next part? I want to list all whole even numbers in between 0 and 100. How do I list even numbers? Now there are multiple ways to do this. You can start your counter from zero. Make sure that it is less than or equals to a hundred, just as we did before. And instead of increase the counter one by one, you increase the counter two by two. And whenever you hit that, you will see that this time around, you see only the even numbers, such as zero, two, four, six, eight, ten up until it hits to the 100 limit. So if I come there, you will see the 100 upper limit. There is another way as well, which is probably or arguably more efficient. What you need to do in here is that you still keep this by 1, but you only increase it, you only show the counter when the counter itself is actually divisible by 2. So if I the counter mod 2 is 
equals to zero, then I can show it. So we can say something like the counter. This means that the mode of the number divided by this number and if the remainder is equals to zero which means that the counter divided by two equals to zero it will show the counter and it will still increase it once if it is not it will do nothing and it will just uh, basically uh, increase the counter and as you can see, when I run the program, I pretty much get the same outcome as the first one. So in this one, I put an if statement inside the mode. So you can also combine these programming constructs. And that is most probably what you're going to see in most of the time. You will see these programming constructs being used together. You will never be asked to use only a loop or only an if else condition. You are often expected to combine them all together to address the problems. And that is the trick. You need to understand from the question which one fits into which situation. And that will only come through through practice. So this is why it's very important to practice these exercises given to you. Let's solve one more exercise before we end up this session. So I'm going to select one of these exercises that, uh, and it will show uh, one of them. Like this one is a good one. Let's take up this one. Draw the flowchart and write the pseudo code, which will display the average of numbers from 1 to 1000. So this is a nice one. Instead of getting these numbers one by one, adding them, what we're going to do in here is to basically use a loop structure to add them. To do this exercise, I'm going to go into the flow algorithm and create a new file. I know that there is a limitation in here in between 1 and 1000. So just as we did in the previous exercise, let's create a counter. Initially, this counter is 1. And the upper limit is less than a thousand. Because when it hits the thousand, it will stop. So we can create this and just zoom in. Counter less than or equals to a thousand. Now, what we need to do here is that we need to find the average of these numbers. How do we do that? So each time the counter works, we need to find an average. So I'm going to come in here, declare a sum, and also declare an average. The average one, I'm going to make it a real number. Because while the numbers you deal are all whole numbers, it is possible that the average can be a decimal number. So what we need to do in here is that we selected the counter uh, 1 and I'm going to assign sum as 0 because currently I don't have any sum yet. Now each time we come into the counter being less than a thousand, sum will be the old sum, whatever that is, plus the counter. Now, the old sum right now is 0, and the counter is 1. So your first sum will be 1. But then, the counter will increase. So you can increase the counter 1 by 1. So the counter will be the old counter plus 1. The old counter is obviously uh, 1. So 1 plus 1 will become 2. And it will go repeatedly like that inside the loop as long as it is less than or equals to a thousand. When it's equals to a thousand, what we're going to do is we're going to assign the average, which will be sum divided by thousand. 
0.0. This will ensure that you have a thousand different values and their sum will be initialized uh, their sum will be divided by a thousand which will then be initialized to average the final thing that we need to do is to show the average we can show the average as the average of numbers so the average the average variable. Now, pretty much the program has ended, but let's just try to run it to see what will be the outcome. So the average of numbers is 500.5. So as, as soon as you run it, it will show you. And it's actually very true. When you look at this, you start from 1, not 0. So a uh, half point is added from there. So it's like 500.5, which will then be displayed to you. The funny thing about this is once you have designed this, you can simply change the number here, which is the upper limit, and find the average of all numbers. If you put it 250 and try to run it, you will see the average of the numbers listed in there. You can also put this something else, like counter is equals to less than 10, and then you add all numbers on the top of it to find it. But make sure that once you change this, you also change in here, because it will affect what number you divide them. As a matter of fact, you can even decide the upper range in here. So you can come in here, declare it, upper limit, and initialize the upper limit there. Just by changing the upper limit now, you can calculate the number itself and find any number in between that range. So I want to find the upper range, for example, as 50. Now it will divide it to 50. When you run it, you will see the outcome as 25.5. And you can change the upper limit now to something else, let's say 1 to 25, and rerun the application and it will still show you the outcome. So always find the output. So this is how you loop the structures. You basically use a loop to repeat a series of statements until a certain condition is met. And when that certain condition is met, the loop structure lives and continues the program. The difference between a loop and the control structure is that the loop continuously does an operation until it is false. Where in the control structure, it will do it once and then it will stop. So by completing the uh, loop structures, the iteration, we have finished everything about Flowgoritin. Now in the next lecture, we're going to go into an introduction to C++ programming. Thank you, for, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.